Hello and welcome to Oracle Storytelling. I'm Sarah of Sarah Wing Intuitive Arts. <sighs> so where are we today? I haven't uh, done Oracle Storytelling for some time. And uh, yeah, just kind of feeling this unknown energy, this mystery energy, really this collective eclipse, uh, big waves of energy. Um, uh, you know, I was thinking about animals and feeling the animal energy. Got this abstract animal print here. Um, really feeling uh, my bird energy with the makeup. I just enjoy it. It looks super pop graphic. Um, yeah. Makes me wish I did things for Halloween um, like I did when I was much younger. Because dressing up like a bird sounds like fun. Um, but hello, dear souls watching. Um, yeah, I always tend to mention uh, things that I'm wearing because um, I always clock those things in people's videos and I wonder, ooh, I want to know more. So got a little rosy gold and opal ring, sorry, rosy gold moon and opal ring. And I uh, got my Herkimer here with um, my little gold snake. So it's kind of like feeling like a little uh, Hecate wedding band to myself as I journey, like all of us at, at um, these big waves of energy, these big crossroads that we are definitely in, that we are definitely pursuing. Uh, we are definitely at these crossroads, uh, each and every one of us. I always like grabbing my Ganesha, my baby Ganesh. Good friend of mine here. So, yeah, um, in terms of my art, which you can find um, on my website, sarahwingintuitivearts.com, and of course on Facebook, Instagram, um, you can see different kinds of posts there. Um, I started a new piece, a larger piece, a four foot by four foot that I will be posting more of as I go along. Um, we're just about very called to start this. Um, yeah, start a large piece. And I noticed even that maybe you're approaching creative projects a little differently. Um, your intuition is kind of just having you create from a different angle. That's what came through. Um, I really... Yeah, it, it just, the piece started out differently. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. Because all of my art, if you don't know, is just downloaded intuitively. Each dash, dot, line, each color that's made. So we'll see. But I was really, felt like it was time. And uh, just felt very called to get a very big canvas. So these energies, yeah, really wild. I thought that if I made a video, it would be a lot darker, a lot more, I don't know. It's funny when that happens, especially as an artist and somebody who plays with color, works with color. When I think things are going to be dark, they usually <laughs> come out pretty, pretty bold. So, um... Yeah, so I actually ended up, got my bag of charms. I have a newer Oracle deck. Um, I love this artist. Uh, so I got the Halloween Forever deck. Uh, Jasmine Beckett Smith. I love her big eyes. And I think, I think, I think I read something about glow in the dark. So I'm guessing if like I put this under light and then turn the lights off, the pumpkin would glow. It's like an odd little note in the review for this deck. 
um, was the glow in the dark. I'm like, these cards don't glow in the dark. <laughs> what are you talking about? That'd be wicked cool. But I think it's just this little pumpkin baby. So, you know, depending on how you look at, at Halloween, I guess, I, I just felt like it was more playful because I guess I'm feeling a little more playful and themey. And then an older deck I grabbed was the Work Here Light Oracle. Um, so this very feminine colored, right? Um, very feminine, receptive yin energy. And um, yeah, just an interesting, right? Like an interesting combination. So I guess, oh, I'm going to go backwards, don't I? Okay. I guess this deck is calling me first. Um, let's get a little charm to anchor us. Kind of maybe think in your head about, um, you can think of a question or if you're ugh, just feeling like, I just don't fucking know. I just need some clarity. Thanks. Or if something's on the tip of your tongue, you just can't get it out or you're going mad in your head, looping and thinking about something. Let's get something to anchor us. Okay. Interesting. So I got like the penguin. Ugh. And I always think of this as a male penguin. Penguin like with the, with the dice on them, which is kind of funny because, you know, like male penguins like carry their young on their uh their feet yeah their little webby feet okay and then the number on top is two so we're just kind of anchor with that and that could just be like anchoring um and you know to me what comes to mind it can be different for you obviously um so i just think of like a, a partnership okay so this could be just like this could be just divine partnership like um yourself and the divine yourself and who whoever um, you, uh, whoever, uh, you work with spiritually or maybe like an angel or guide of yours and the sense of working together and like co-creation. And I don't know about you, but I don't know, but I, I feel like <laughs> the more I'm kind of getting aligned, the less I know what the fuck is going on. So, um, the sense of co-creation of, Things are moving ahead, like I'm being carried forward, right? Like I'm putting one foot in front of the other, but here's my, you know, spiritual help, my co-creation. I'm actually like on their little feet, right? And we're marching along together, even if I don't see them. So that's what came up there. So that might relate to the card. We'll see. That might just come through as something that each of us has to interpret, or maybe what I said made sense to you. So let's see. Oh, I don't know. When I did this last, this is crazy. I can't believe it's already... <sighs> already what they call spooky season. Whatever. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> it's so stupid. I just started building on feet, which is pretty literal from what I was just getting, but oh lord. Okay. Building on feet. The card came out for building on feet. Uh, okay, that's nice. So we got Akasha, which makes me think of the Akashic Records. Our life's journey. Our own little library of us. Your guidance is divinely guided. So what did I say? Building on feet? Which is <laughs> just... So I guess if we follow my little translation metaphor, your guidance is divinely guided. Maybe that's it. Like, <laughs> it's as kind of goofily worded. Your guidance is divinely guided. So maybe that's building on this message that, like, okay. See her? There she is. She is just going. I feel like this a lot. Like, listen, I don't know where this is, and I don't know where that's going. Okay? Like, I, I probably, you know, 
get used to my surroundings after walking this path for a while, but I don't know where I'm headed. I just, I, I don't know a lot of what's, um, what is next, you know, um, I can feel that I'm more and more aligned through things in my external world and internal world. Um, but I don't know what's next. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the next thing that's coming, but your guidance is divinely guided. So just the little things you do or the brave things you do, you know, everything's a small step. Some feel like earthquakes that rattle us to our core before we take them. Um, sorry, one of the most major ones just popped to my, <laughs> in my head because we all know. We all are like, oh, yeah, I have this, 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 50 things on a list. But at the end of the day, I think we know the brave things. The things that, you know, I've heard some, uh, some people talk about them, like, what is it in your life? Things in your life that you owe yourself to do, to follow through and just see, you know, um, see if when you take those steps, you know, where will you be guided? Will you be guided forward in a way with the scary thing or will you be guided towards a different door? But you still had to go forward with the scary thing to go, oh, okay, I walk this way. But, you know, it just turns out your road actually was a left instead of right. But you still needed to start down the road. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're doing okay. I think we're doing pretty good. Let's get dark. I just love... Like... It's not just the light washing me out. It's like hyper colors. I love it. I love it so much. I really do. All right. So, I mean, we did happen to, you know, we're, we're having these eclipses. So there's a lot of things in our shadow. And if we're working with light, baby girl, honey child, we are working with shadow because you can't have one without the other. And if you're illuminating, you're, you just can't have one without the other. You know, kind of one of that the other. So let's see, maybe. Ooh, I just got something in the shadows that's like, almost like, like if you picture like, I pictured like, a, it was almost like a little child curled up in the dark, like in a ball with a little light on it, you know, like super sad. And then it turned almost like into a little creature. So... Something in our shadow, so something in a space that um, we can't see consciously, we might feel, have an instinct about, but we, um, we might need to ask our guides or angels or you can, earthbound sources around us, you know, to help guide us, to illuminate. Um, the thing in the shadows that, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, it's something that needs love, like so much love. And it wants your love and attention. So something in our unconscious, in our shadows, that would be a beautiful thing to hold, behold, um, integrate, illuminate as new knowledge within us of this is a part of me. Um, but this part is kind of like, ooh, Okay. This part is kind of like, I was almost going to say starve, and I said no, but let's see. Well, okay. Santa Morte. I'm going to read this card. This is like a new decky deck. And I also don't know enough um, about this not to take a look. And you can kind of just, I mean, you're, you're always able to intuit something from images. Or the words or maybe a color is popping out at you and it makes so much sense right now or um, one of the bottles makes you think of something all right and that number is 31 so 31 can make you think of something too Yee. Alrighty, you must change your circumstances swiftly utterly and decisively powerful magic is required be clear on what you want and then petition Santa Murte. Oh my God. Santa Murte for support. Ah, it 
So it literally means Saint Death. She is the great goddess and the Grim, Re Grim Reaper combined. She is both terrifying and compassionate, remorseless and full of love. Her power is unrivaled, transcending human values, morals, and law. Ah. See, I, I like that. So that makes me think of a couple things. So it makes me think of duality. It makes me think of... Oh, I want to reference one thing and I need to look back up. Let's see. Great Goddess and Grim Reaper. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of something... Hmm... You know, the word starve came through and I'm seeing behind her, here's this um, altar with all these offerings. So that has me thinking, if there's a part of us that, um, like a, a way that we engage our life, um, patterns that just run in us that, uh, really are ready to be retired. We can use the word die if you want. Um, but in a way where maybe part of us that we don't like when it comes out or uh, patterns that we use um, and it's really primarily like a survival narrative, a survival plan every time. And, and you know how that feels if you've lived in survival mode for any period of time. And maybe it's something like that. Maybe this is for you, you know, when I said I picture this unconscious, you know, in the unconscious. So something that is dormant, right? Or something you, you, you don't like about yourself, so you kind of don't look at it. Or patterns in you where... Um, after you kind of have to come out and you come out in the survival way, maybe you feel shame that you had to interact in a particular situation or a certain relationship. Your pattern that comes out, you just stuff it down and it becomes this little cramped down lonely creature, you know, um, because you feel shame about it or you feel embarrassed or some other shitty, <laughs> shitty feeling. Um, and Maybe it's time to kind of offer that up, offer that part of you up and hold it for a second. And I think there's something you know, when it talks about great compassion and, I'll, you know, it's this duality, but there are cycles, there are cycles, there's, there's, you know, life and death, there's erosion and renewal. We see the cycles in the seasons and maybe this is about, you know, is there a part of you again that comes out and then you kind of really want to tuck it back in and the feelings that come up after are like shame, regret, like all these things. But every time, it's not like a one-off, you know, or you are certain, you run a certain pattern in a certain way, certain situation, certain person. Um, and you always just don't feel, you feel off afterwards. It doesn't feel right. But every time you have to deal with that thing or that person, that's how you deal with it. But then you just feel like shit afterwards. So maybe this is saying, try to hold instead of just burying it right down, instead of cramming that pattern, that, that part of you right back down, try to give it a little space, a little bit of voice. Whether that means instead of shunning and shutting yourself down, journal about something or just sit and be with that feeling and let, and if, and if it makes you feel uncomfortable, sit with that. See if you can sit with how you feel. There's something to be said about acknowledging or just even saying, like, if you're in a survival script, you're in the survival pattern. Say every time you see person X, you're in this survival pattern. Okay. And instead of going like, oh, thank God, when that's, thank God that's done, won't have to be that person again until next time. 
Um, see if you can just acknowledge how you're feeling and acknowledge that that is part of you and it is doing a job. And if that's part of you that you don't want to be you anymore in that situation or with the, with that person, that people, that whatever, then, you know, you might have to see how many steps further you have to take it. But step one is you acknowledge it because you don't really ever put that, put survival patterns aside and they just go away. You know how it happens. They pop back out. So instead of just pushing them down, the first step is to acknowledge they're there. And that's part of you. You could even, I mean, you could even say like, thank you, this feeling for, you know, for wanting to protect me. But, you know, and then you could write some, you know, audibly or, or otherwise write some little love letter to it. Like, thank you for that. But I'm, you know, just acknowledging to yourself that this is something you don't want to continue. Um, and then figuring out for yourself what those next steps are going to be to kind of put, put it to bed. You know, what do you have to offer up to yourself? What do you have to tell yourself? What, it, what are the things that you can't say in these situations? Or you wish somebody would say back to you every time in this situation? And see if you can offer up those to yourself. You know, your, your altar of needs your altar of needs of what you need to hear, what you need, what can you do that's nourishing that you wish you were getting in these situations, that you wish you were always getting from this person. You want to hear from this person. You want to say to this person, let that become your altar of needs and give to it. Does that make sense? Sure. I'm going to get um, another charm. I mean, it's 78 charms. Well, my thought was asking you shall receive. So let's see. We got some, wow, we got some really good things here. Jeez. <laughs> we got the trophy. Trophy's great. Um, the trophy says talker. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to count this as like a beautiful, bountiful cup of communication. All right. And this is a gift that's yours, right? You get to take a, a magical sip from it and um, you get to communicate with yourself on a higher level. This is, this is a gift. What else do you get? Oh, yes. The ring of commitment. <laughs> I'm loving that. Okay. The ring of commitment. Um, so again, these are what I'm interpreting them as. They're going to mean whatever they mean to you, but uh, the ring of commitment. So what are some things that you're noticing maybe cycles or patterns in your life that you, you're just noticing you're being told in oh so many words or nonverbal words or experiences that you need to really start committing some new form of commitment, some new form of discipline. This could even be like a stricter form of study um, or it could be, yeah, like a new form of learning, but you need to schedule a commitment or just what do you need to schedule commitment to for yourself um, to, to help you, uh, to help you align, to help you, whatever it is, if something pops to mind, that's probably what you need to commit more to. Okay. And this. Look at this beautiful golden heart charm. You know what? I, I'm trying to remember where I got this. Um, that's almost like a little mirror in there. Um, maybe it was a grandmother thing. But because, it, I don't know, there's something about it that makes me think of. Like, like a little, <laughs> like this would be a, a little tag for a pet and for an animal. So I guess the third gift would be the love of an animal. And I have 
people in my life which are having all kinds of animal animal stories um a lot that actually uh, surround transition um life death type transitions with animals um and i personally had a beautiful divine miracle um and was communing with a lovely uh, buck that appeared in my yard and it was very magical and um, him and another younger male stayed in the yard and slept and ate pretty much all day and um, I'm ever so grateful so I guess divine love through the magic and wisdom and complete awesomeness and Sometimes heartache and gut wrenchingness, um, joyfulness, and always the highest love we can ever imagine um, through animals is the third gift for you. Wow, I really want to grab one more card. And I guess <sighs> the only thing we just came through is what? So maybe it's clarity on something you're thinking about. You're like, what about, how do I, what? I just felt it's that open. I think our collective energy is so full. I think if you're a sensitive person, if you're swimming in this ocean right now, if your energy is mixed in it, if you're connected, holy crap. This is, um, You're not even thinking sink or swim. You're just getting moving. <laughs> I think you're just turning in this ocean. Um, and thank God that we have we have people watching out for us, not just on Earth, but many planes and realms and different ways that, that you communicate with as well. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm in the ocean, touching on all this energy without an inner tube for sure. Two cards and my throat is choking. Let me see. Yeah, okay. It's this card. <laughs> well, not swimming in an ocean, but awakening, energy upgrades, a new way of being, integration, which is kind of where we left off on the last card. Um, which is a good, I think that's a good transition from this integration to not swimming in an ocean. But, yeah, no inner tube there, babes. Just being carried along in the air. Oh, carried in the air in the clouds. Um, yeah, awakening, energetic upgrades. Maybe that's part of it, too. Um, just energetically, we're being recalibrated right now. And I don't know about you, it feels super funky. Um, sometimes, other times, it's like, what? Other times it does feel pretty similar to this. Or maybe you're having um, different kinds of dreams lately. I always think that's fun. But um, yeah, the what is this? So if you're feeling basically like that, like um, you're floating between, uh, like you're just floating towards a galaxy, the unknown, and above the clouds, you're just, I mean, you're just floating. You're not swimming, you know, like I use the ocean metaphor, like not swimming in it. You're just kind of churning in it. Maybe you feel like you're just like not flying, but you're just kind of like hanging out, hanging out here. Um, wow, this is giving also like very lifting, almost like that alien thing. Um, but in other terms, that could just be like held in the light of <laughs> or this literally could be like your highest possibilities you know your highest possibilities coming to fruition coming into alignment but I don't know about you I never see it coming I never you know I don't really forecast the big things the big things tend to churn and churn and churn and then in front of you, right? You're standing upright and suddenly you're like, oh my God, 
how did I get here? I'm standing on a cloud. This is amazing. Um, but before then, it's like, am I being sucked up by some kind of light beam? <laughs> Just floating <laughs> up in the sky? This could also be maybe you're having like a huge um, hit to your body. Maybe you're feeling a lot of the Mars Aries, like more aggressive energies. Um, and maybe your body is just like, you know, your muscles are just done, done, done. You need to care for your muscles. You need to just get so much rest more than you ever did before. Or maybe this is like your mind, you're going crazy, you're getting inundated with all this like uh, mercury and energy. You're just like, your brain is like overloaded um, right now. And again, you just need to kind of like cool it and just take steps, but let the universe, let whatever words you want to put in there. That's great. Your own higher self, um, whatever, um, divine mind, just let that hold you just like, you know, the penguin was like holding, you know, we're walking along, but we're on the, we're being carried too. Okay. So even when our step is this pretty much like corpse pose, like Yoga pose, like course pose, when you're just like cooling down and you just have to completely be, you are just in a sense of I am being so much that you are doing just being, um, you're also being held or lifted up or both. So I wish you many blessings. I wish you beautiful, beautiful gifts. I wish you gorgeous sleep, um, intuitive dreams, intuitive knowings that kind of captivate your heart, let you know it's okay in the moments you need it, uh, auspicious blessings, great hydration, and know you are very loved. You are always enough at every point in your life and there's not a single time you aren't and until next time